Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Yun from the Google Bezel team. I'm pretty glad that Bezel has already been mentioned uh, many times in previous talks. Uh, and uh, I wonder how many of you have uh, used Bezel? Not so many, except the people who have been to the BazelCon. OK, so not, not, not so many. So I will give a fast and a correct introduction uh, of Bazel. The first thing about Bazel is it's fast and correct. Uh, so Bazel requires you to declare ex uh, your dependencies explicitly in build file so that it can construct an action graph that knows exactly how to build your target. And through content-based caching, it, uh, never, uh, it only rebuilds what's necessary. Um, and because each act, uh, Bazel knows what's input for each action, it can try to isolate the build environment for you to achieve hermetic builds. For example, on Mac OS and Linux, we have a sandbox uh, enabled by default. So uh, since your build action is uh, hermetic, that means you can run it anywhere and get the same result. So that means you can set up a build cache on remote server um, to be shared with uh, different uh, developers, and or connect to some uh, remote execution service uh, that can run your builds uh, distributedly. Uh, for example, ngflow, I don't know. Um, and Bazel is also extensible through Starrock. Starrock is a, a language, is a, is a dialect of Python uh, that prevents you from doing um, hermetic things. Uh, so. All the code you are going to see uh, in this talk are Starrock code. So through, through Starrock, you can write build rules for different languages without changing the Bazel binary. For example, we have rules Go, rules Rust, and we do have some native rules embedded in the uh, Bazel binary, but we are in the process of migrating those to, their, uh, to Starrock and in their uh, uh, own GitHub repository. And finally, Bazel supports all the mainstream operating systems and architectures. So uh, there are many nice things about Bezos that I cannot uh, touch today. But uh, in summary, uh, Bezos is a multi-platform, multi-language build system that aims to be fast and correct. Then how hard could it be to design a package manager for it? Um, so before going into BZMod, I want to uh, explain how did we introduce external dependencies. Uh, bef uh, before with a workspace file. So, you know, uh, Google internally has a monorepo called Google 3, which hosts like billions of code. Um, like every external de third party de dependency are checked into Google 3. For example, Zlib or some other library, libfool, and you have your own project. We do have a, a workspace file that's uh, but the, the, to mark the source root, but uh, it doesn't do much. Uh, we don't declare external dependencies in it. But with Bezel, it's a different story because normally uh, you don't want to check in all your external dependencies. So what uh, Bezel does is that it, uh, while you tell Bezel to build a target, it will um, analyze the build graph and uh, generate those external dependencies, uh, fetch those de external dependencies on the fly. Um, and uh, it, uh, put it under the output base ex slash external directory. And in the build file, in Google 3, you can just reference the third party de uh, dependency with a normal label. But in Bazel, you have to prefix with the um, repo name at zlib or at repo foo um, to the actual uh, target path in that repo. So, how does Bazel know how to fetch the uh, external dependency? Well, open source in Bazel, we introduced the, the Starlock uh, repository rule, which you can uh, tell Bazel how to uh, do that. For example, this is a simplified version of the most widely used repository rule uh, in, in Bazel, HTTP archive. Basically, you define what parameters the repository rule can take and, Im uh, and implement an implementation function. Uh, what it does basically downloads the source archive, extract it, apply a build file, apply a patch files if necessary. And then finally, in the workspace file, you can use the 
uh, repository rule to declare your external dependency. For example, here is a definition for zlib. Um, but uh, let's take a more complicated example. For, uh, say if you want to introduce portal buff. But portal buff also has some other de transitive dependencies, right? Um, so, but workspace, uh, so um, workspace is the only place that you can de define uh, the external dependency, and it only works in the root uh, project. So that's why uh, Bazel users often have to use this um, uh, dependency macro. It nodes a macro from the protobuf repo, which introduces the dependencies of protobuf. Say, protobuf introduced zlib 1.2. What if you also depend on gRPC? And it also depends on zlib, but want a different version. What could be worse is that they could apply different build file for it. And the build file, if the build file is different, they, they cannot agree with each other. So this is basically the famous diamond dependency problem. And there's no good solution in the workspace file. Because uh, the order you introduce those dependency mac macros matters. Uh, it, it will depend, uh, determine which version you get. And this essentially turns the workspace file imperative. That's, what, uh, that's not what we want for declaring dependencies. So to summarize the work problems of workspace, uh, it doesn't work transitively. It has no sensible resolution on diamond dependency. And it's very hard to understand and maintain. It's very hard to, for a Bazel user to figure out which uh, exact dependency was uh, introduced with all the nested macros. Um, and uh, basically, the works by base is not nice. Um, yeah, so that's why we uh, designed BZLMART. Uh, a little bit of a history of BZLMART. So there were uh, previous attempts to uh, solve the workspace problem. Uh, but uh, by 2020, September, we finally decided to rewrite the whole thing, introduce a new system uh, for Bazel to introduce external dependency. We first tried actually to implement it as a separate tool, but it turns out to be not feasible. But BZL mod uh, remained as its code name because it's uh, weird to pronounce, so people just call it Bazel mod or Bazel module. That's all fine. Uh, in January 2022, uh, with Bazel 5, we introduced BZL mod as an experimental feature. That's when we draw attention from the community. So initially, we are a two-person team uh, at Google. Uh, but uh, through, uh, with Bazel 5, we get more and more com community contributions, uh, from reporting bugs to sending PRs to help us implementing new features, uh, from building a GitHub action that can publish your new release to the Bazel Central Registry to build, the, build a verb UI to browse all the modules available in the Bazel Central Registry. So another, uh, another year passed uh, in December 2022. We finally uh, announced BZMAT as an optional uh, official feature in Bazel. You can turn it on uh, through a flag. And we promised the backwards compatibility. And that's when, also when we officially launched the Bezos Central Registry. I'll talk uh, about that later. And finally, uh, uh, last week, we cut Bezos 7 uh, release candidates. Uh, with Bezos 7, BZMAT is enabled by default. We added the uh, log file support uh, in BZMAT and, uh, uh, and the Bezos mod command, you, you, which you can use to inspect your dependent, external dependency graph. And also, we, uh, of course, Bazel is built by Bazel. We also migrated out uh, uh, Bazel itself to be built with BZMod. So the first concept of uh, BZMod is Bazel module. It's basically like a Maven package or Cargo Cray. Um, yeah, it's basically the, uh, the unit of uh, uh, dependency in, in for Bazel. And uh, you can define your dependencies with modules of Bazel. Um, it's all very clean and nice. Uh, and uh, you only need to depend on uh, declare your direct dependency. For example, uh, the transitive dependency here uh, uh, of gRPC and protobuf will be automatically uh, resolved. So that brings two questions. Where do we get 
uh, those dependencies? How does Bazel know where to fetch those? And uh, how does Bazel resolve the dependency conflicts? So, uh, like I mentioned, we have the Bazel Central Registry. It's basically a metadata registry about all the Bazel modules. We don't actually store the source archives. It's served from bcr.bazel.build, and you can browse all the modules available at registry.build.bazel. And uh, the content is actually maintained by a GitHub repo. This is, this is similar to Homebrew, and anyone can contribute via PRs. And uh, what's the best thing is, uh, about BCR is maintained by the Bazel community. We are, uh, without the community support, we couldn't have kept it running. And uh, in the Bazel Central Registry, we first uh, uh, we store the uh, source.json file to uh, record where to get the source archive for the package. And uh, we also have a, a SHA hash to make sure it's, uh, it's correct and uh, reproducible. Uh, and also for the patch file, uh, you can apply a patch file, for example, to add a build file. Uh, and it also um, has a hash value associ associated. Um, and uh, but, well, one thing we have to separate out from the source archive is the module.bazel file, because we need that uh, information to, for dependency resolution. We don't want to download the whole source archive during the dependency resolution. So this will make it much faster. Um, and we have a pre-submit.yaml file to specify which targets should work. And you can also specify additional test targets that you want to run uh, to, to, to prove this, um, this package actually work. And uh, uh, with the support of BuildKite, we can run the pre-submit for each module we check in. And uh, uh, one thing about uh, the BCR, B, uh, BCR is that it's add-only. We, we never change or modify any checked-in uh, module. This helps ensure the, the reproducibility. Um, and of course, you can set up your own private registry. It's basically, uh, you, it can be a, a static web server or just a local file system directory that follows the same uh, directory structure. Um, yeah. So, dependency resolution. So, BZMAT is actually inspired by the GoMAT uh, package manager. Uh, we use, also use the minimal version selection. What it means is that uh, it selects, uh, it, it first assumes um, the packages are backwards compatible, and it only selects the maximum version uh, that appeared in your dependency graph. For example, here, if our project is A1, depends on B and C, and transitivity depends on D and E. After the minimal version selection, D will pick D1.4 because it's larger than D1.3, and will pick E1.2, but not U1.3, even if it's available in the, in the Bezos Central Registry. Uh, so, one more thing is that this, uh, we are using this because it's simple, it's reproducible, and uh, it, um, it generally uh, it's not trying to get the latest version, which means you are less impacted by the potential breaking changes in the newer package. Um, of course, you can override your uh, Bazel module with uh, uh, you can uh, like the override directives we provide. For example, you can override the version uh, or to fetch it with a different registry. You can point it to a local pass or a specific git commit or just a general URL that's pointing to the, uh, another source archive. And one thing about overriding is that it happens before the dependency resolution. For example, if you override C to a customized version, which depends on E1.3, so E will also get, chan um, get uh, changed in the resolved dependency graph. And one more thing is that we enforce strict depths uh, in BZL mod by default. Uh, not by default, it's, it's, it's no way to op opt out. <laughs> um, so that which means if A doesn't uh, declare D as a directed dependency, it won't be able to see the repository uh, of D. Um, for example, th th this is important to ensure uh, correctness, because what if you upgrade, say, to C1.3, 
and then you, you could actually downgrade D1.3 or even D will not be, uh, will not exist anymore. Uh, so so, uh, so far with uh, basal modules, basal century three, and minimal uh, version resolution, we have a pretty simple package manager for basal. Uh, if all your dependencies are already built with the basal and already have a module basal file, it will probably work pretty well, but that's not, not the reality. So uh, the reality is that for each language specific ecosystem, there is already a well-established package manager um, that knows the ecosystem better than Bazel, uh, and we don't want to repeat everything, and it's also impossible to uh, like convert everything into a Bazel module, right? So um, that's why we introduced um, module extension. So. Um, Basically, module extension is a way to introduce your customized uh, uh, external de uh, dependencies. Uh, the core idea is based on the observation that we can resolve uh, like uh, other customized dependencies after the basal module resolution. For example, here we have A, B, C, D as basal modules, and each basal module has some uh, like, for example, Maven jar dependency or cargo crates dependency as those tags, uh, green and blue tags there. So after the basal module dependency, we dropped D1.3. Then we know exactly which modules depend on which, uh, needs which uh, long basal dependency, right? And then we can ma uh, ma uh, write a module extension that to, uh, to resolve those dependencies. So each module extension um, is resolved once after the basal module uh, resolution, and it can collect those tags across the basal module dependency graph. And then it can uh, perform arbitrary logic to resolve tags info. How do you do that? Depends on how do you want to integrate uh, the package manager uh, for that ecosystem. And finally, it can call repository rules to create repositories and generate build files, most importantly so that Bezo can understand it. So let's take an uh, uh, example. Uh, so for example, we have a rules JVM e e external to integrate Maven. Uh, and, uh, but this is actually not the, uh, the uh, real rules JVM external. It's just for demonstration purpose. Um, so you can use module extension in the module.bazel file. Um, so first, Module extensions can be defined in a Bazel module. Then, after you define the Bazel module, you can load that extension. And then, you can call the tags uh, directives to say, OK, I want to depend on JUnit, which version, Guava, which version. And, or you can say, I want to load all the dependencies from this pom.xml file. And then, remember, we enforce strict depths in BZL mod. That also applies to repos generated by module extension. So you have to declare that I want this repo generated by this module extension so that you can use in your build file. So this is how you use it, but how do you implement it? Um, it's similar to a repository rule. You can define which tag classes uh, this module extension Accept. For example, the cores are basically strings, and uh, the POM file should be a label that points to a file. And you um, have an implementation function for the module extension. Then inside the implementation function, you can go through all the resolved basal modules and to collect all those tags. And then you can call, basically source out the dependency resolution part to the actual package manager. Uh, here, we're just using Corsair to resolve the dependency. And based on the in, uh, output, we can then call uh, the actual repository rule here, Maven single jar, to uh, fetch the dependency, generate the build file so that Bazel can understand it. Yeah, so that's how module extension works. Um, so to summary, uh, we have Bazel modules that can resolve native Bazel dependencies. We have the Bazel Central Registry. It's a home 
of all public Bazel modules. Currently, it's mostly hosting on hosting Bazel rules, because naturally, those are Bazel projects, um, and C++ dependencies, because there is no uh, like dominant uh, package manager for C and C++, and it's often uh, you often need a handcrafted build file to for for those C++ dependencies. And in the Bazel ecosystem, uh, people like to build from source. Um, and, we, and finally, we have the module extension, which can talk to third-party package managers and uh, resolve dependencies, introduce uh, those to in your Bazel build. So um, the future of uh, BZL mod, we obviously want to migrate the whole Bazel ecosystem on BZL mod. Um, we are going to continually polish our migration guides and improve our, uh, the tunings. We help the Bazel rules uh, to migrate, um, and especially to in integrate all those package managers properly, we need some help from, uh, we probably need some help from package manager experts, right? If you want bring fast and correct build to your language-specific ecosystem, you can uh, check out and uh, help us with the migration. Uh, we also have some planned upcoming features for BZMOS, uh, vendor modes. I don't have time to elaborate. It's basically checking the source of the external dependency in your source tree. And we also plan to implement a repository cache so that you don't have to refetch the same thing uh, over and over again. And finally, S bomb. I think it's a. I, I added this like today because I think uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a hot topic uh, this year, right? And I think Bazel is in a perfect position to do that because it knows your uh, precise dependency graph, and with a nice feature called aspect, you can write aspect to traverse uh, the dependency graph of your target without changing the build rule, without changing Bazel, um, and generate a precise S-bound for your application, uh, for different applications in your, in your uh, project, right? Uh, so Tony Ayuto is my colleague who is uh, actively working on a solution for the Bazel ecosystem. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Um, the long-term version of Bazel mod, like I said, is to replace the workspace file. Uh, in Bazel 7, we have enabled it by default. In Bazel 8, we hope we can disable a workspace by default. Uh, you can still turn it on by a flag, but uh, in Bazel 9, we hope to entirely re um, remove it. But this is a, a planned uh, uh, timeline. It, of course, depends on the migration process, so no promise. Um, yeah, so finally, there are some resources. Uh, you can check out the user guide and migration guide and some minimal examples hosted on the example repository. And if you want to work with us, join the Slack. And uh, yeah, hopefully, we can bring fast and correct builds to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, do we have time for q and I don't know. Yeah. We have time for one or two questions, and then okay. just so everybody knows, we will be skipping the break and going straight into the lightning talks. So real quick, does anybody have any questions for you? Oh, there we go. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Just curious, uh, can module extensions also influence the version conflict resolution logic? Yes, sure. You basically, you, you can define the tags as name and version, right? And then you collect those tags and write your own minimal version resolution logic in the Starlock code. Actually, I think uh, uh, there are already some uh, language already do that, right? Yeah. Okay, and I think that is all the time we have. Thank you very much, June. Thank you.